I'm pretending that you've mastered the frontal view of the skeleton, right? So that you understand the proportions, that kind of thing. And so what I, this is how I always start every drawing of a standing figure that I work with. And you can easily translate this into seated figures, right? So if you understand where the half units are on the body, if someone's seated, that's really right around where the half point is, is that joint where they're seated from, right? That ball. So you can, you can use this for the upper part of the body and for the lower part of the body if you're, if you're drawing things isolated. It's relative proportions. So what I always start with is I start with the top of the head, the ankles or feet, and then the, the uh, midpoint of the body, the crotch. Okay, where the pubic synthesis comes together. And then I do that subdivision into four units that I have here on the screen with, um, you know, this is a half and then another couple of small units. So one of the things that um, I do in every figure drawing class that I do what I do when I begin every single drawing that I do in figure drawing classes is I start actually, sometimes I'll even keep a ruler with me in class or I'll use one of those skewers and I'll just use that, I'll put the center where I want the center of the body to be and then I'll use the skewer for the top and the bottom part of the body. So the next thing then is if you have it divided up, we're gonna be looking at the upper part of the body first and some of the lines and some of the major masses and how to look at them in terms of the spinal column and that kind of thing. So I suppose I could zoom in a little bit on, on this to show you a couple of the things that I want to show you. I've got this upper part of the body and First of all, I want to show you how wrong the rib cage is in terms of the model that I'm using, this skeleton model, because it has this post that runs through it that sticks the sternum out there. The sternum actually kind of drops back this direction, and really just where your manubrium meets, where everything comes together, that's probably the center point where it, it projects out the farthest. So this is slightly erroneous or wrong. So notice that I did it. The spinal column is running off the back. Now, I've kind of leaned it forward, but the spinal column actually has more of an S curve to it. And we can talk about that when we're, when we're in the life drawing class. But basically, then the rib cage pops off of it like this. It scoops out. And the pelvis that I showed you guys before as a trapezoid is actually tilted forward. You can see how the spinal column actually kind of intersects with it. But, and it overlaps slightly with this sort of ridge of bones that comes off the back. So the spinal column is actually going right there into that sort of trapezoidal structure. I'm showing you these things just to point out some of the landmarks. Now the other thing is, notice that I've drawn the back of the spinal column, but that the neck bone goes up in and that the head is balanced on the center of that spinal column, okay? So, this is the midpoint of the body, that's the crotch, where the pubic synthesis comes together, right there. And then this would be where the ball joint is gonna intersect in with it. And you can see I've got those units that, those, those uh, four units on the top here that um, are subdividing things. The head is a football shape that's balancing on the spinal column, okay? And then I drop off the face off of that. And notice that the jaw kind of overlaps the spinal column slightly. And um, remember how we talked about how, for instance, where the ears are, that you can tell where the ear canal is because it's right behind the jawbone. Okay, so notice that it's the ear canal right there, that ear hole, is, it's not in the center of the body, it's slightly back, and that shifts your ears slightly back when you're drawing them. I just wanted to point those things out for when you're drawing people with flesh. Now, the next part of the body, let's see if we can get that set up, is drawing the rest of the body and the major joints that we're talking about. So this is the midpoint of the bottom half of the body, and I rested the bottom of the ankle on the bottom line there, right? So 
The ball joint is tucked in right underneath the crotch there. Then I've got that sort of heart shape or triangle that goes distally. This is proximal, this is distal. Circular again, proximal, triangular or heart shape distally. See that again? Then the other thing is, a problem with this skeleton in particular is that the scapula, which is the your shoulder blades in the back here, would be a little bit out slightly, and your shoulders would be moved back this way. This is probably, in some ways, a little bit accurate to 20th century businessmen, the way this skeleton is leaning, believe it or not. If you don't work out, what happens is your chest muscles actually are developed more than your back muscles, and that's why a lot of people have shoulders that roll forward towards their chest. When you work out with these back muscles here, it actually pulls the scapula a little bit more back, and that this is where the joint would be almost in line with your spinal column where your neck is. For, for, you know, younger, more fit people and for fit people in general. So I've kind of drawn it in a little bit closer to where I think it should be. And this is the shape of the, the rib cage as it should be, okay, uh, in an idealized figure. I'm putting the kneecap on which is that little diamond shape that you can see right here. Okay. Then the distal uh, bottom part of the upper arm and the feet, which basically I'm kind of drawing a shoe, aren't I? You know, and if you want to learn how to draw feet, probably drawing a series of shoes is really a good way to do it because then you know how it fits into that form. The next thing I do is I draw in the scapula, which is the, um, the sort of backbone or the, the uh, shoulder blades that come off the back there. And I think of them as a series of diamond-like shapes. You can see that here. It's actually a sort of triangular or diamond-like -like form. And the next thing that I'm putting in is the actual um, collarbone. So the collarbone overlaps slightly with the scapula, and you guys can kind of feel it, and, and that's always a good way to, to see how things work. If you run your finger from this notch that's in your neck and run it back, you can see that your collarbone almost overlaps back with your shoulder and moves back and connects up a little bit with the scapula, and that your arm bone is tucked into that, it's tucked inside of that area there. Um, you can kind of see it here. If it didn't have this metal point, this would be tucked in, that ball would be tucked in where the collarbone and the scapula kind of meet, and it would be shifted back to here. So feel it on your body to really get a sense of it. That's a really good way of doing it, to, to understand it. So um, the radius and the ulna on the body again. The hands divided into those, those sort of paddles that I showed you last time with the frontal view. And now let's explore a little bit some of the aspects of the, of the rib cage because I think one of the things that people who are beginners always do is they want to like, because you're looking at it from the side, they want to scoop this out like this because you know about that undulation that I showed you from the frontal view. It actually doesn't look like that. It actually is just a, a curve like that. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to point out is notice that the elbows are right in line with basically like the ninth or 10th ribs, right at the bottom of the rib cage there. And that this is about a half a head in length, okay? I erased out that, that trapezoid and I did a little bit closer observation of the pelvis. And the reason why I'm pointing this out again is that this is the high point where it projects out and you can kind of feel that if you run your finger down your side, you can actually feel where, where that bony landmark is. There's actually another one that's kind of right here. So there's two high points of the bone here and here that if you're doing life drawing, you can kind of see them where they're jutting out. And sometimes with a really bony model, you can almost see this plane 
that runs across the top. If you've, if you've done life drawing, you can kind of see that stuff. Or if you like to look at naked people. <laughs> now, the leg, believe it or not, actually the bottom leg has two bones in it. You've got this, this bone in the front, and then you've got another sort of springy bone coming off the back. It's very, roughly the cognates of the radius and the ulna uh, that you have in the upper arms. But they tend to be a little bit less important because what you'll see is the, there's going to be a muscle that pops in and out around this. That's called the gastrocnemius. Okay? And so we've kind of, we have that drawn in. So we're going to zoom a little bit more in on the head and we're going to work out the head a little bit more at that football shape. And so we're zooming in and you can see that the jaw drops off of that, that football shape or olive that's on its side. A subdivision of a half here, then the other half of the bottom half of the face, and then this is where the, the nose will rest on, and then the teeth are halfway between the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin. I suppose I could zoom in a little bit here um, in this one and show you it so that you can kind of see it from the side. But remember I told you that this skull is not so good, right? It, it has some issues. Um, but you can kind of see that this is the eye line that runs sort of through the center of the eyes here. This is the bottom of the nose line here, and that this is the center of the mouth here. Get it? Got it? Good. Okay. So that means that the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some little zigging and zagging to indicate in where these, these forms come in and out. And the muzzle on a real person projects out more and then pops back in more. And you learned that the last time we drew the head. There are a series of planes in the head, and there's one plane that goes like this. Sometimes there's a slight flattening out or a curvature here, and then another plane, and another plane, and another plane. And so what you're just going to have to do is find some skulls online, draw them, or buy a skeleton from, from a, uh, an art supply company or a medical supply company. Medical students buy these things all the time, and you can probably afford it. It's pretty inexpensive. And then I'm just sort of indicating in some of the, the, uh, the bony masses. And I think that this is kind of important that what I'm doing is I'm giving you the top of the zygomatic arch, right? Which is, this is that flat plane we looked at from the frontal view. Then the bottom of the zygomatic arch here, which scoops around the back. And then the lower mandible is this Y-shaped form that'll, that'll pop in there. Put the, the teeth in and then the Y-shaped form, that's the lower jaw, okay? You can see that there are the segments of the spinal column and then some of the, the, uh, the bones that come off of here. I think this is the ninth cervical vertebra that, that pops out of the back here, and that's a, a major bony landmark that you can indicate in and look for where that, that projects through. And so then we just draw that in. And there you have your skeleton. See, the proportions are pretty close. So again, mark the center of the body, the top of the head, the ankles, and then subdivide the, the top part into quarters, put a line in for the center of the knees, and then you can build the skeleton on top of that. Okay? Good enough.